it goes on. Okay. All right, you're on. Uh, hello, uh, we are, uh, our team, which includes Tanya, Watson, and Luis Perez, we are uh, talking about the problems that the lack of water can cause. Uh, we recently, in the previous week, we experienced, or we have the opportunity to experience what a single so source of water can be. And to be honest, uh, it is tough. It is tough even, <laughs> even when I have my own water from my reservoirs, then, I, then we have all our emergency uh, water. It is. It was really hard. I mean, just to pull the water out of the containers, boil in the water. Uh, when if I want to drink it for three days, it was something really uncomfortable to do. So uh, when I when we were watching the videos about the, how many miles people have actually to walk just to get not even clean water, you know, make us see that this is a real a real problem and the statistics show that many people in our planet still lacks that, that uh, clean water and the biggest problem is then cholera malaria and typhoid are a few of the serious diseases resulting from un unclean water according with the world health organization at least 1.8 billion people use a drinking water source contaminated with feces. As a result of contaminated drinking water, some 80, some 842,000 people are estimated to die each year. 60, 663 million people rely on an in and improved sources, including 159 million dependent on surface, surface water. <clears throat> Africa ranks highest in death attributed to water, sanitation, and hygiene. Between 13 and 70 percent of the population dies from disease related to contaminated water. Women and children spend <coughs> more, for, uh, more than four hours walking for water each day. Rwanda, 22% of death per year related to poor water quality sanitation. And their population is almost 12 million. So we have been racking our brain about approaching this problem from a new perspective. We know that there are several organizations that specialize in the project. And to talk about this, I would like to introduce uh, Tania, she's going to give us some ideas on how to solve this problem. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so like uh, was mentioned, you know, water is a and very obviously an assess, a necessary part of um, living and having a productive life. And in order to address this problem, the struggle that I think we felt was that there's a lot of really great organizations out there who are already addressing this problem and they're and they are main focused. I mean, these are specific organizations that that's all they do is they um, try to provide clean water. And there's quite a few of them when we went out and did the research, which is awesome. It's really exciting to see that there's so many people working on this problem. And so when we found that in our research, we felt like we need to come up with sort of a new perspective on this that maybe um, addressed something more than just how to get people clean water because it seems like that's already been sort of done, um, but a way to get clean water that is different. Um, Rwanda specifically is the country that we felt sort of drawn to to uh, to do this project with because you know they seem to have one of the highest rates and as you may know Rwanda has suffered um, a lot they had a horrible genocide in their country 
a few decades ago, um, hundreds of thousands of people were killed. And obviously when you have war, that can stimulate um, a scarcity of clean water. And so there was a really, they were in a really bad situation not very long ago. But they've actually made some really great progress. Um, their government has been really instrumental in, you know, helping this problem. And, and so it has improved. It definitely has improved, especially in the last two decades. Their um, access to clean water, um, improved sanitation has risen. Um, it's gone from 71%, like in 2012, to 78%. Um, but you still have about 39% of the population who live below the poverty line. And you have 16% who live in extreme poverty. Um, and 25% of the popul population is still unable to access a clean drinking water source. So while a lot of really great work has been done there, it, there's still work to be done for sure. And um, technology has gone, has been awesome. There's some great, I. I can't even tell you how many different inventions and different kinds of ways people have been trying to solve this problem with technology. Technology, I think, has been a huge, made a huge impact, especially um, in areas where they have, they can't, you know, maybe can't hook into a, a water source. Um, and especially one of the things that has been really effective and has been really um utilized a lot are um, new kinds of filtration systems that um, can you can where you can just pour water into a source and they go through these filters and it cleans it so you don't need any it's basically just gravity based you don't need anything else to clean your water you don't have to boil it you don't need a heat source um, it's pretty cool there's some really cool stuff out there and um, so because there's so much of that. Our goal ended up being is we wanted to incorporate sort of the great things that other organizations are already doing and then sort of put our own personal twist on it. So our goal, our actual goal is um, to increase clean water access in Rondo, but also at the same time, we want to increase youth participation and in international health issues. We feel like um, the youth are really wonderful. They're really wanting to, they're very um, aware of global issues, much more than I was at their age, probably because of the access they have to the internet and um, different opportunities to, you know, see the world in a global perspective. And I think they really care about these things. And I think we've seen in our society that, just because you're a teenager doesn't mean you don't have power and it doesn't mean you don't have opinions. And I think we're definitely seeing that come to fruition. Um, so we wanted to sort of tap into that because that was sort of where we saw some of these organizations maybe missing the mark a little bit. They were marketing and they were doing all of their, um, you know, pushes for donations and fundraising. And it was, it was directed to adults or, you know, corporations or whatever that may be. But I think they may have been missing, they may be missing a little bit of the kind of enthusiasm and the kind of um, passion that can, that a, you know, a teenager or youth have. And there's a lot that they can do. They may not have a lot of money, but there's a lot, they have a lot of energy. <laughs> I have two teenage daughters, I know. <laughs> they have a lot of energy and a lot of passion and they want to do good things. So that's what we want to do. We want to um, kind of combine those two things and help the youth. And we're, when I say youth, I don't mean just the youth here um, in our country, but I mean the youth in Rwanda. I think they're amazing youth too. They've gone through a lot and they are now becoming upon a generation um, their teenagers were not alive during the genocide. So they are at a generation now that can really, it's not held back by their past and has opportunity to really move forward and push their country forward in a really positive way. So what we wanna do is 
help the youth in both countries build a partnership. And with that partnership, they're gonna create some relationships that will sort of address this problem, not in just in the immediate, in an immediate way, but also that relationship is gonna, we want that to continue so there can be long-term improvements and sustainable improvements. Um, but we needed to do a, a little bit of partnering. So we're, for our partner or our project, we're gonna part, partner with a, a group called Water for People. Water for People um, was created in 1991. It's an NGO um, and they're, they specialize in clean water and sanitation. That's all they do. Um, and they've been operating in Rwanda since 2008 and have um, really been successful in establishing a local president's presence. So they actually have a facility and people in Rwanda that um, are working on this. And then we're going to partner with um, a company called LifeStraw. Um, LifeStraw is a technology company that's using filtration really in an amazing way to create drinking water. And they're a for-profit company, but they do kind of um, operate in a human, they call it a humanitarian entrepreneurship business model. So even though they're marketing their products to on a retail basis, all of those, and it, it might be similar to what you know, like from Tom's Shoes, that they're using some of the proceeds from all of those sales and they're going directly back into helping people with these clean water issues. So they're really doing a lot and they've already done a lot to sort of help in this way. Um, and then the other uh, partner is gonna be our youth partnership, which is Basis Charter Schools. And Basis Charter Schools um, are actually a very well-known charter, not just here in our, locally in my Phoenix area, but also internationally. They have schools throughout Phoenix, but they also have a school in China. They have school in other parts of the country. Um, and they've actually been recognized by the US News and World Report as having the top five best high schools in the US. Both of my girls go to a base, go to a basis charter school. And it's, those kids are extremely phenomenal. These are kids who are pushing themselves academically and are very, um, they understand global things. They understand the what's going on in the world, and they are encouraged to um, to know other cultures, to know different perspectives, and how to they think outside of the box. Um, so I thought this would be a good start, and that this would be a good partnership because I'm familiar with it, and also because these are some really great teens who I think could be really, really helpful. Um, so. The idea is that we would partner with the basis schools um, and utilize those. We want them, the high school students, to be as active and utilize this as much as possible. We want them to be as involved as possible. Um, so we want them to do a lot of the work. <laughs> but obviously, there's going to be some things that um, they can't do. So. Things like financials, things like um, buying or purchasing things or establishing relationships with our other partners like Water for People, that's all going to have to be done by us, the organizers. And we're going to be heading, spearheading that. But the idea is we're going to partner, we're going to use Water for People, establish that relationship and help them help us make contacts with um, schools in the Rwandan area schools that have need for a clean water source. And we felt like if we could get a clean water source in each in each school, then the kids coming to school, not only will they be able to have clean water while they're at school, but that's a source where they can, while they're at school, and on, that they can take clean water home. Um, and that may save on some of the issues of, you know, having to walk miles and miles just to get water. If they go, if they can go to school and get clean water, that's a huge incentive to send your kid to school. So um, we felt like that was a good partnership, and we want to kind of create sister schools. So similar to like a sister city, 
We're going to partner one basis campus because there's several campuses, there's over 16 campuses in the Phoenix area. Partner the basis, a basis campus with a um, Rwandan school. And they're going to be a sister school. And there's going to be a relationship between the two. Um, so let me just quickly go over some of the details. Um, each school is going to have a faculty advisor who's going to oversee progress at each individual school. And then everybody, that faculty advisor, as well as the kids in each school, will report to us. Um, we want um, each, and there'll be a team leader, a student in each school that will um, sort of do, make sure that the team is on task. And so what we want to do is we want to purchase from um, LifeStraw. They have these really awesome uh, units. It's kind of looks like a port, it's like more like a portable unit. And they're, um, let me get to that part, but um, uh, they have these units. Where did I put that? Oh, and so it's called, um, Community, it's called a community purification system, and it'll remove basically virtually all pathogens found in drinking water. And it's a pretty durable system. It's an all one unit. Um, it contains a 25 liter safe water tank. It'll provide clean drinking water to serve 100 people for three to five years. And the great thing about this system is that it can be easily assembled on site, requires no batteries, no spare parts or no chemicals. Um, basically, it just the once every three to five years you have to replace the filter. And the idea is, if we partner for LifeShaw, they'll let us purchase these at cost. Um, retail is like three hundred and seventy, so they're not that expensive, really. But even if we could get them at cost, you know, that would help bring down that price as well. And then, um, and then we're hoping that they'd be willing to donate an extra filter. So that not only will this, so the system can be maintained, virtually maintained without any work other than replacing the filter, which means it could last if you have an extra filter, you know, up to 10 years possibly. So that's a long time until maybe something more permanent can be put in, which you would hope by 10 years that that could happen. Um, so each partner school is going to have responsibility of raising funds and donations for one unit, which seems completely doable because like I said, the units are gonna be hundred, just a couple hundreds of dollars. So that will give them the opportunity to sort of get involved, educate people, come up with some creative ways um, to raise the money. Um, and then they'll be responsible for purchasing the unit for a school. So ideally we'd have 16 schools participating, that's 16 units for 16 schools in Rwanda. Um, and then we're gonna, again, with Life uh, Water for People, with that partnership, be able to get with them to make sure that the units go to where they're supposed to go and partner with them as far as how to get them there and make sure um, they're going to the right place and they're going to be set up as they're supposed to be set up. Um, so some of the, um, some of the issues that might occur, obviously I think we think are the two biggest um, sort of uh, possible issues that might come up would have to do with time and um, logistics. So the logistics piece <clears throat> could be tricky um, because obviously we have to purchase these things and then we have to get them to where they need to go. We're really going to be counting on water for people to help us with this because they are a U.S.-based company and they're based out of Denver. Um, so we have a contact here in the U.S., but yet they are they have um, – people and a, an actual location in Rwanda. So we're hoping that that relationship will sort of get us to the logistics part and make sure it gets done. Um, the other issue is time. Um, you know, we obviously want to allow enough time 
for the people, the kids at the basis to do their part, which is get their water together, get the things purchased and make sure they go out in a timely manner. Um, you know, school starts here in August. So, <clears throat> I mean, if we've already set up a, uh, or a relationship with the charter and the, each individual school, it would just come to in August, we would have to um, create our groups. And once we get the groups established, we get that and we get a regular meeting schedule established, then they can just kind of fly from there. Um, we want to give them, you know, at least four to four to five months to get their donations or whatever, their funding together. And we plan on working with them. We're planning on doing like biweekly meetings with each charter to make sure they're on task, make sure they have any questions, make sure we're getting all that. And then in the meantime, we'll be doing our back stuff on the back end. Um, and then... Yeah, that's the idea, that just to make sure it gets done on a scheduled, timely manner so that, you know, we're not, the kids can get the whole project completed before <laughs> before school's out. <laughs> so we want to try to get that done. Um, and we have a, a schedule. I think the, the main way to avoid that is just to be scheduled and make sure we're having those regular meetings and that they meet their goals at, on, within their time frames, which I think that should be possible. Um, and basically that's, that's our plan. Um, <clears throat> we want to, I mean, this is an issue that is so important because when people don't have clean water, they get sick. And when people get sick, they can't, they can't be productive. They can't work. They can't take care of their families. They can't go to school. They, you know, it pretty much keeps them from doing all the things that they need to do to grow, to progress, to become productive. And when that happens in a community, you, that cycle of poverty just continues because you don't, people can't be productive and they can't get themselves out of poverty situations. So, you know, we feel very passionate that this is really, really important um, because those people, people need to, in order to get out of that poverty cycle, that pop, that cycle of disease and um, you know we need to make sure that they have the basic things that they need to do that and um, so that's why we feel like this is really an important project um, I guess that's everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah how did we do with the time all right I and you know, we would appreciate any feedback and any comments or questions or anything you feel like maybe we didn't get addressed. Um, you know, we would love any of comments, so we appreciate that. Um, so thanks for your time. <laughs>